Are there any assets that you shouldn't put into your will? Today we're going to talk about four of them that you want to make sure are not in your will. My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm an estate planning attorney with offices in Edina, Minnesota and New York City. And it seems recently there's been some kind of an update to some of those online drafting softwares. And what I've been seeing with clients who come to me who have drafted their wills online is that there's some assets in there that really shouldn't be in there. So as I said, we're going to talk about four different types of assets that we want to make sure are not included in your will. The first one is going to be your retirement accounts. Now you may think that it's a simple part of your will that you want to make sure you leave your retirement accounts to your wife, to your husband, to your children. And it seems if you're using these online sites that maybe that's a reasonable way to plan for your assets. However, the real way you want to handle these assets is to use a beneficiary designation. By using that beneficiary designation, the asset, the whatever's in your retirement account, can be rolled directly over to your spouse or to your children. In the case of your spouse and your children, this is a tax-preferred way to distribute that asset to them. It doesn't have to pass under your will, and there's no involvement of a probate court. However, if you don't do it correctly, and you list the beneficiary as your estate, then what has to happen is the IRA, your 401k, has to get distributed to your estate so that your executor or personal representative then has to take the next step of distributing it to your family members. And in doing so, you've lost most of the tax benefits that you would have had with a straight beneficiary designation. The second asset we wanna make sure that's not in your will is any insurance policies. And this is a big, dangerous one you wanna watch out for. It's just like retirement accounts. When you set up that insurance policy, you're creating a beneficiary designation. Who's going to receive the proceeds from that insurance account and that insurance policy when you're gone? If you have it correctly designated as your spouse or your children, when you're gone, that money goes directly to them. But what happens if you don't? What if you put your estate down again? And let's say you have a $10 million life insurance policy or even just a $5 million life insurance policy. In most states, that $5 million life insurance policy will push you right up to or above estate tax problems. So. A beneficiary designation will allow your spouse to get that $5 million without uh, having the taxes of the estate tax on it. But if you put it in that will first, it has to go to the executor, the personal representative, and then get transferred over. You're looking now at an estate tax problem. You could be giving up to 40% of that money to the government because you didn't put down the correct beneficiary. Third type of asset to keep out of your will, any assets that you own in a trust. Now, many of my clients will work with me and work with their financial advisor to create a trust. It's a very smart way to plan for your assets. It keeps these assets in the trust out of probate and keeps things private for you. However, if you've got a will that says, I, have, I want to move my home, I want to leave it to my wife as part of your will, but you've already transferred that home to the trust, well, the provision in your will doesn't do anything. The trust is going to determine where that asset goes. And it may not seem like a big deal, but if you made your will a while ago and you have your will says one thing and your trust says the other, you've now got a conflict between these two documents. And the will is going to be the one that gets overridden by the trust, which says where those assets are going to go. And the fourth asset we're going to keep out of your will is properties that you own in an LLC. So a part of my practice is a lot of my clients like to use rental properties as a way to generate extra income. And as opposed to leaving it in their own name, which causes a lot of problems and additional taxes that you may run into, we'll set up an LLC to own the property, to manage it, to invest. You know, I have clients who have multiple properties and use it as an investment strategy. Well, if you've created that LLC, you can't then say that 123 Spruce Street, which you technically own, is owned by the LLC, in your will goes to your daughter. And then 125 Spruce Street, the townhome next door that you also own, goes to your son. The will is not going to control at that point. We've got the LLCs that actually own it. So your will is not going to be able to do anything with that asset. And frankly, when you're working with those LLCs and setting them up, we want to make sure we already have a succession plan. That LLC interest can be what's transferred to somebody else if something happens to you. And by using the LLC, we're keeping that property out of probate court and we're keeping privacy as well. So if you don't want people to know what the property is that you actually own, that LLC allows you to shield it. So we've looked at the four assets that shouldn't be in your will today. Your retirement accounts, your insurance policies, assets that are already in a trust, and assets that are already in an LLC. So if you've used an online drafting software, or maybe you've even worked with an attorney in the past, and you have these assets in your will, let's make sure we get that will cleaned up. Make sure your estate plan is properly drafted so these assets are really going where you want them to go. 
If you're ready to get started, feel free to hit that like button at the bottom of the screen. You can subscribe to this channel. And if you're ready to set up a consultation, it's called a legal strategy session. There's a link in the comments that allows you to uh, click and create a, create a link on my schedule.